All right, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Very good. It's good to be here. Uh, you're as excited as I am. It's uh, AC Hackathon. It's a great idea. Hmm. So, uh, Damon Hernandez asked me to uh, talk about how we might publish more of these kinds of models to the web. There's actually a standard for this kind of thing, pattern after HTML. It's called X3D Graphics. So this talk will tell you about what is X3D today, what can it do, how might it apply, and uh, we have some uh, homework issues at the end. Now, now I, I know most of you are sitting in the back row. That's that's where I used to sit. And uh, so the good news, just to, just to start it off, is the homework's not for you. Homework's for me. I'm here to learn more. I want to see how can X3D Help, help out in some of the common challenges we're seeing here. We've, we've seen a few of them before. We think we can apply. All right, so I welcome all your comments afterwards about, hey, you forgot this or that. Or, in fact, you feel free to interrupt as we go. I think we got plenty of time to talk through this. All right, so here we go. So first, uh, I looked up hack. I, I don't know if you, if you got your uh, opera glasses with you, but uh, here's a hack. Wow, 12. 12 definitions, uh, to cough noisily, to accomplish a difficult programming task, to make a quick code change, uh, to strike in a frantic mood. So I, I, I'd say you can hardly go wrong with the word hack, you know, if uh, it's one of those words you can apply in almost any situation. Um, and then uh, before we get too technical, I'll, I'll uh, decloak a little bit. What, what's my background? What, what brought me? Here today. Well, I, I work down in Monterey uh, at the Naval Postgraduate School. We do uh, a lot of uh, research, graduate education, uh, pretty much having fun. But uh, I came here, besides learning, uh, after working in uh, an industry that's not too unlike a lot of uh, the construction industry uh, projects that people work on here. I was in the Navy and spent a few years in the shipyard. And so Guess what? They're an awful lot like a building. You've got rooms and piping and doorways and electrical cables and all these things that have to get assembled and put inside. And oh, it's a tight fit too. So that's where I I, I came from. So uh, if that's not enough motivation, my son's down in uh, Cal Poly now, and uh, man, what an amazing program they have. So that's pretty cool. So I'm hoping that we can uh, lock some of this stuff. That's me. What about X3D? Well, here's the long form. What the heck is X3D? It's a file format, but it's a scene graph, but it's a standard, but it's a way to do this, and you can also add that. It's not just the geometry, but it's the animation and the user interaction of how to do it. Okay, and uh, since 3D is a big place, you can keep adding more stuff, more stuff. More. The X in X3D is extensible, just like XML. So, wow, what's the what's the punchline there? Okay, if you go to, you can have that same dialogue for HTML. Boy, it means a lot of things to a lot of people. If you go to the World Wide Web Consortium page for HTML. It says HTML is the publishing language for the web. Oh, okay. So that's what X3D is trying to be: the analog to HTML with 3D graphics so that people can do what they're good at, use whatever tool, whatever process, whatever gets you there. And there's, there's quite a lot. But then you can save it out, put it where somebody else can look at it, explore it, touch it, share it, mash it up. So that's what X3D is, is all about. But, but not, yeah, question, please. But not Sure, you can edit, change. We have a, I'm not showing it today, but we have an open source editor. There's a bunch of other editors. Uh, and in fact, uh, there's other paths to get there too. Yes, Dave. Uh, yes, you can. Either directly as X3D or as Vermal, virtual reality modeling language. Uh, Blender has an excellent uh, X3D export and they're also really, uh, really prompt on bug fixes, which I think is pretty cool, because we will post those. Uh, other tools have varying degrees of how well they support it. We keep a resources page that lists all those ones. And uh, a lot of them are open source, including one that we built. 
open source cross platform. Okay, so how'd we get there? Well, community. You can't climb this mountain by yourself. There's, there's, I'm sorry, there's nobody in the world smart enough to do all that. And uh, uh, it's notable that we're here today at, at the Facebook campus. And uh, I, I list them. I am on the list of a, a number of great companies that uh, would, would not exist if it weren't for the web. Okay? So we are trying to raise the tide, float all the boats. We are trying to go there. It's a nonprofit. It's a dot org. It's a member driven organization. It's also open to lots of public visibility because we're not trying to control it. We're trying to get it out there. So if there's something you like or something you dislike, great. Join the party. Let's keep building it. So we wanted to make sure that X3D stayed open. And that arose out of our, our background. Uh, this came out of the 3D graphics community. It started and uh, continues on at SIGGRAPH, both the conference, and now with its annual small conference sponsored by SIGGRAPH. And we built on some solid stuff and we've been going ever since. Uh, maybe interesting here is, uh, well here's a survey question I sometimes do in uh, uh, 3D graphics audiences, but we got a real mix here today. Does anybody do 3D models? Answer, okay, a number, okay. So uh, we can make this a thought question. You don't have to be on the spot. But uh, I'll often ask, uh, uh, if you get 100 or more, that's a pretty good sample space. How many people here write 3D models? How many people have a demo right now? How many people have a demo that's a year old? How many have a demo that's two years old? Two hands. Three years old. Four years old. It, by the time you get to four years, maybe five, there's just a small percentage of hands left. And then you keep going backwards in time, and you say, eh, none of those hands go down. You say, uh, what do you use? Oh, well, we have, uh, we have thermal models, and we, uh, we upgraded them maybe to X3D. I've got student models from 1997 that <clears throat> still work. We still use them, OK? So that's something that, you know, people like to badmouth thermal. Okay, I don't care. It's still a lot. We can still use it. And we didn't have to go backwards. So there's the history portion. Uh, what does it mean to be a standard? Well, the word standard's kind of low. It means different things to different people. For most nations, meaning most government agencies, meaning most regulations. Oh, do uh, you guys have those in the... Uh, architecture, building communities? Maybe, yeah. Uh, for most of them, that means international standards organization. Modulo, a bunch of cats and dogs who usually feed them. Well, we're one of those feeder organizations. So we do all the heavy lifting. We get it to work, meaning our community, our members. And then ISO gets to ratify. In fact, we were the first ISO standard that was granted permission to publish a free copy on the web. Back in 98. Now you can find maybe uh, 50 or 60 like that. Uh, uh, you can also pay ISO, I think it's 550 Swiss francs if you like, and that's great. You'll get a PDF copy. Or you can just go to our website and get the free copy. Why? Because we made that deal right up front. And so everybody's happy. So what ISO gives us is not a slower process. What it gives us is diligence, rigor, cross checking of all the T's and cross and I's dotted. So those specs, boy, that's the, that's the uh, treasure. Those are the nuggets. And they're not for the faint of heart. I mean, these are, these are things that only nerds could really appreciate. And often they're written from the perspective of how does somebody build this to make it work consistently everywhere. It's not meant to be a, a learning tool, but you can. You can't learn from it. It's there like any other spec. There you go. So we're pretty happy with that. This is where the rubber hits the road of can we make stuff work on the web? And you can get it all online, et cetera, et cetera. I'm not, I'm not going to talk to every one of these slides, but I figure it'll be a leave behind if anybody does want to click or follow up. I'm also happy to do it. Okay, guess what? This was not driven by any single company or any 10-foot tall player. It's a community. It takes a lot of folks. We do working groups. We let people join. We let them say, what's the problem we're fixing? Oh, 
And maybe we know then uh, how you finish. Okay? And so uh, you can see, you can track the evolution of these things, and it's very interesting over time. Uh, sometimes uh, it doesn't quite get there. Often that's the problem telling you you're not going in the right direction. You know, for years uh, of W3C, others were given static that, well, it takes so long. Uh, okay, here's, a, here's another quiz question. How many canceled W3C recommendations are there? Uh, none that I found. How many nodes have we thrown out? Uh, well, we have one that's deprecated because we no longer need it. If it's there, it's okay, but the other things fix the problem that's solved. Oh, so ratcheting forward, never falling back, really valuable. Sometimes it takes longer, but that's it. Okay, now here's another confounder, at least in the 3D industry. Oh, well, yeah, that's good, but we have nice triangles, too, and our polygons are pretty whizzy, and why don't you use ours? Well, uh, we, we patterned early. In fact, we were more open than W3C at the start, and W3C has come back to a no-kidding open. Patents are okay. Money is not evil, but if you start charging a penny per click, forget about it. That is not compatible with the web architecture. So this is what we've done. My personal slogan is, you can solve any legal problem, but you better do it in advance, because there are an awful lot of dead-end cul-de-sacs out there, and patent trolls, and other unusual creatures that will uh, make your life miserable if you don't inoculate up front. Okay, so, uh, comma, that has worked for us. Very well, thank you. Uh, what else have we done? We, uh, we've always required two implementations about Eight, ten years ago, we realized, you know, even, even the best meaning, smartest engineers in the world sometimes don't land at the same point, even when they think so, and they're talking. And we, we saw this occasionally, trying to do something really valuable, and they would say, uh, well, I would, we want to do it like this, and yeah, we want to do it like that too, but they don't work. And, well, show me yours. I can't. Well, you show me, you show me yours. Oh, I can't, and, and at first people get a little upset because they think, oh, uh, you don't like me. Why won't you show me your code? Answer, I'm not allowed to show you my code. The company or the lawyers or whoever it is, forbid oh, so now we say, yes, more than one, but at least one open source. So we can all point at the lines of code we disagree with and go, yeah, yeah, that's where the pointy triangle didn't work. This is how we fix it. Okay, so. We've got a process. Here are some words that I think are often used, maybe interchangeably, at least in the business world. So I'll put these out as uh, market share dominance does not equal a standard. And there are a lot of smart people in this valley who know, uh, who have lasted longer than many of the even best company life cycles. And it's, a, it's just a darn shame for everybody when things get locked up. So we believe the spec and the standard enables better business models, so enables more market to occur. Okay, so there's a deep confounder. We are royalty free, blah, blah, blah. Everybody gets it, I think. So let's move on. Resources. Boy, this is, uh, this is one of those categories. If I knew how big it was, we probably would have never started. But there's, there are hundreds of resources listed on, on this page. And we try to, uh, those are just the categories there. Keep it up to date. When somebody says, hey, you forgot something, or no, this changed, great. It just keeps ratcheting a little bit every day. There's uh, been a couple of topics mentioned. Because we're extensible, just give you some quick snapshots of some. AR, hot topic, an area of active standards work. Here's a, a video of uh, some folks using AR with X3D, and there's, there's a number of videos like this. So if it's uh, a little hard to see, what's going on is uh, the tablet is being pointed at some piece of gear that needs to get a gasket replaced, a pump moved, some part changed. Oh, and the, the user can see, how do I do that? I gotta lift this part to get in there, and oh, and here's the plan, and 
oh, if this is web-based, you could click here to go, is that part in stock? Has it been updated? So I think you could see a lot of parallels in the uh, AR for uh, maintenance to what the AAC community might do. There are a bunch more videos like that, uh, different approaches. Uh, let's see if I get the right screen now. Okay, so uh, AR active right now. Uh, international, this, this is one of my favorite acronyms. It is, it is my favorite, you know, Navy, they, they use a lot of that. Does anybody know the uh, derivation of I-18N? That's why I don't know. Because between the letter I and N, there are 18 characters. In international, so they have, they have a few of them. So, okay. Not everybody's excited about acronyms, and that's, that's okay. <laughs> yeah. But I, I thought We work too much with government. So. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, here's, we've started, uh, we've always had this hello world thing. We started a challenge recently. Uh, let's do hello world for different nations. Why? Because it tests I-18N. And sure enough, there are uh, Chinese characters as well as others. Uh, some of the players, X3D players, do very well at this. Others, oh, not so good. Oh, gee, you've done very well at your native nation audience, maybe you want to grow up to the W, first W, world wide web. Okay, another area we're working on. Uh, what does that scene look like? Oh, here it is. It's uh, XML. For those of you who like looking at code. Very declarative, very much like an HTML page. Let's look at some more of that. Let's look at the source of this guy. Okay, starts off with HTML, actually has metadata, wow. Uh, CSS, anybody lost yet? This is plain vanilla. More CSS, back to HTML. Uh, oh, embedded X3D, right, in the scene. Okay, so this is using a thing called X3DOM, we exported it to that where we can put X3D right in an HTML page <clears throat> without anybody's permission. We've escaped plug-in hell. We have a way to do it now because the, the x 3 d folks have implemented not just in OpenGL, but also in Flash. So one way or the other, most browsers have something there. And they've escaped the low-level render lockout, and we've got a path that doesn't even require uh, permission. Okay, uh, more. I'm not going to show you these demos. There has been a bunch of work in GIS and building globes. Very tough. I had a very uh, wonderful visit yesterday with Mike McCann down in uh, Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute. They're exporting all sorts of stuff. He's uh, going to. I think he's going to take a look at uh, Open Sea Map. He's using Open Layers. He's using X3D, x 3 uh, So can we do geospatial? Yes, and. Uh, um, here's the history of this one that's not well understood unless you're maybe an open geospatial consortium. Um, you get somebody here will know that what is the floating point accuracy of a graphics processing unit? GPU. Rephrase. 32 bit or 64 bit floats? So anybody happen to know? They're all 32 bit. Why? It's got to be fast. Really small, really try to reduce power. Great. If you take your latitude and longitude and write it as floating points, and, how, and you put it in 32 bit, guess how close your accuracy is at the surface of the Earth? Answer: three to ten meters, depending on your latitude. So if I give myself a geo position, I would be jumping from screen to screen here when I put. Oh, so we have to use 64 bit. But then you have to translate it down. Lots of different ways to do that. It's all math. And everybody was doing it wrong until an Australian student said, you know what? I'm going to actually measure what that round off error is. And he found out lots of things were jumping that were claiming to be perfect. Fix. 
don't render it to an arbitrary point on the ground, render it to the user's viewpoint. And always make it relative, and then the round off error only occurs out of sight. Hmm. Wow, guess what? Everybody does that now, only because we broke trail on it. So standards help. Here's more of a drill down. CAD, we have uh, unlocked how to export lots of different CAD formats. There are multiple companies there that are very large and uh, typically protect their customers from each other by the use of proprietary standards. Sound familiar? Uh, uh, we have now, we're now exporting multiple different CAD formats and we can match them up. Okay, so there are patterns for how do you drain the swamp or how do you find a way for everybody to agree, everybody to do what they're good at. I'm not saying file formats are bad. They have very good reasons why they use them. But they block interoperability. We found the mix. Uh, we did a survey of actually 36 categories for another ISO group. And we scored, four years ago, we scored something like an 85, just about as high as anybody else. Uh, we can send you that report if you want. But I suspect that when we assemble all the requirements for BIM and AEC, a lot of them are covered by those 36 or other things we've done. And the deltas, the differences, will be very interesting. So eager to make that uh, journey. Here's our reference. Uh, gee, can I convert? Can I use another authoring tool? There's lots of converters once you have it down in there. Probably the industry leader, biggest market share is Okino. A few years back, rewrote their entire code base to your effort to make the X3D scene graph the center of it because, uh, quoting their uh, president, it was the common denominator between all these different things and it enabled them to reach back and forth into all of them. So if you have a different format, great. Congratulations. Let's, uh, let's publish it to the web, et cetera, et cetera, more. And so some of these workflows some of these patterns then are quite repeatable. We're trying to encourage tool chains to build up. We're trying to encourage, ooh, maybe, maybe we can get past who's got the best triangle to what vocabularies for metadata are we using. So not only is a model documented, but a tool can understand what the documentation says. Okay, so very similar pattern for what is going on in a lot of W3C and W3C standards. Okay, now here's uh, maybe our coolest project where uh, we have commenced an X3D 4.0 effort. Uh, X3Dom, pronounced uh, Freedom, is uh, an open source JavaScript project by Kronhofer, the laboratory that's both uh, university and industry partnership in Germany. Stellar team, Johannes Baer leads that team uh, along with uh, Dr. Baird uh, and Dr. Yvonne Young and a, and a great team. Some of, a number of our things were shown at. Where, does, where do we think it fits yet? Well, X3DOM has taken a lot of our work with W3 to say, can we reconcile our scene graph to put it in there? And they've gone ahead and implemented it. There's also a declarative 3D community interest group that our Web3D team participates in. They, they participate in, and uh, we are meeting all of the requirements that they've assembled in our uh, X3D 4.0 design. But this kind of gives you a feel, the difference between declarative and imperative. Uh, uh, programmers are all down here. Do this, do that, write this triangle, put your viewpoint there. Declarative says, well, we have a chair over here, we have a table over there, we have people coming in and out. I will just declare what they are, and I will let the low-level hardware, I will let the program figure out how to draw it. Okay, so there's the yin and yang of it. I uh, uh, hope that resonates. Here's a very cool demo they just published a, a short while ago that uh, of a number of demos, I think maybe best uh, shows the scale of what can be done. They have, uh, uh, I'm pulling this down from Germany right now. It's uh, refreshing, loading. Um, uh, pretty cool. Can we see that? Should we turn the lights off? Or, uh, yep. Good. Okay, thank you. Uh, now, I do, I do have a quibble about this scene. Uh, they were very parsimonious in their use of viewpoints. 
but it's uh, it's some exceptionally high number of polygons, several hundred thousand. You can see videos, and I've seen the demos in person where they've had 60, 80, 100,000 polygons rendering in real time on a laptop, not even on the network. Very good. We've, uh, we just had a call this, this week on uh, updates to our binary compression algorithm. I have those slides here if anybody wants to see them. Plan ahead. So since they didn't give us many uh, viewpoints, let's just zoom in. Let's look at stuff and let's see the kind of level of detail that exists in, inside this thing. So we're animating now just based on my mouse. Going in, I think most people agree that uh, this scene was not constructed in large part by hand, but rather it's a composition of many objects, many data-driven models that were put in here. Okay, and uh, um, uh, our usual threshold here in the 3D community is, uh, well, I like to, I like to say uh, it's quantitatively cool. Does, does that term escape it? Does anybody use it? Quantitatively cool means people look at it and they go, oh, cool. You, you can measure that. All right, so, so what do you all think? Does this scene, it's just one scene, but does it pass? quantitatively cool test in terms of an exemplar for AC? Yes, no. Okay, let the, let the record show we had uh, at least a few head nods. Okay. Thank you, sir, for getting the, the lights. Yes, question. The question is for this area I know nothing about. Yeah. Like, how clickable is it? I mean, like, is this just... Any, any level of detail can be clickable. You can place anchors on any piece of geometry just as you can put an anchor on anything in an HTML page. Okay, but it's not like... They are, okay. let's look at it. How much can you like group? Like, let's look at it. I will go, right now, uh, this runs in any, uh, all the browsers. Uh, uh, I just, let's view source. Here we go again, HTML, CSS. Building, uh, what do you mean, as like, in like, a like, building or making? There were like views and columns and stuff. And, like, right. I clicked on it and it's like you can see me. And a answer if you want. If you design it, that's all part of your workflow. And now now we're starting to get to the level that I would like to see is, gee, what are best practices? Uh, how do, do I want to make it clickable? Or do I want to make it a tooltip pop-up? Or do I want to have a, a menu on the side uh, that lets me navigate without breaking the flow in the scene? Or do I want to have a voice interface, or what? And the, the I think the answer is all of the above. And best practices emerge by doing that. So, uh, so where is that here information we go. entered? Do you enter that for the markup, or is that done through the object itself? Like uh, Answer, uh, it depends, and it depends on the author, it depends on the tool workflow. And so what we do is build lots of examples. And you can put, for example, a, uh, a touch sensor or an anchor, pop-up tool tip, or some kind of cylinder, sphere, or other interactions uh, sensors. And what I'm describing is not some specialty thing to X3D, but rather what are the common practices for user interaction in 3D graphics? And in fact, the way we've written, for, written this, we probably need a fancy acronym for this, but I'll leave it. It's, it's platform independent. When the author writes this, he doesn't say, well, if you have a mouse, you do it like this. If you have a connect, you do it, do it like that. If you have a virtual wand, you do it like this. If you have none of the above, you use these key presses. We are device neutral, device agnostic, and we define these common 3D metaphors for interaction and navigation in device neutral. Why? So the author doesn't have to worry about, is my oil rig playing on a laptop, or a PC, or a handheld, or a tablet, or a cave, or a head mask, or something like that? 
I define the interaction, and then the device mediates the user experience to meet the author's intent. So now we get all the way back to, once again, I think the controlling factor for AEC is, what is our workflow? What do we want to export? Well, if we're trying to visualize the new site for the new building, that's probably a fly through, maybe clicking on a few things, exploring. If we're trying to build it, if it's a construction team on site, they will have a very difficult, yes, they will want to mouse over and go, what's the size of that? What's the load bearing uh, requirement? Which material? Is it in stock? Am I ready to put that in or is it sequenced later? I have to put something else in first. Those are the common questions you have to do. Navy has similar questions of, of uh, how do I take it apart? How do I fix it? How do I do that with a new person who's never seen that piece of gear that's been locked up for 10 years and hasn't broken until just now? Okay, very common things and the answer to that tends to be very similar but just a little different for all the companies. They will say, oh, don't worry, we got, we got an end-to-end -end solution for you, just do it our way, which works great until the license expires or something else changes or you say, well, I'm, I'm gonna mash up this thing with that thing. Uh, uh, how, how did that work again? I had uh, one demo in 3D that was very funny uh, that illustrated uh, Point kind of. We were, we were doing a, a, a drill down of different layers of globes, space to face, and uh, we had prepared a special globe data set for this site in Brazil that was having a, a conference. So we got uh, almost to the bottom, we're going down, and, 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 and the organizer jumped up and she said, wait, 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 bring it back, bring it back. Uh, Okay, everybody, uh, when we break for lunch, you're going to go around this building here, and don't go that way, go this way, and, and then we're going to meet. How many folks have been in an architectural fly-through demonstration? Did you have freedom of navigation? For those who can't see, we had uh, about five raise your hands, yes, one raise your hand, yes, we had, uh, yes, been in fly-throughs, five, one, had freedom of navigation. Did you have your your audience, your the people you or somebody was demonstrating to, interrupt at some point and go, uh, wait, wait, show me that thing over there. Will that will will that door open at the other thing? Or what's the view from the VIP so did you have those kinds of experiences? Okay, I, I'd ask why does that have to be a special feature? Why isn't that just part of best practices, just part of publishing to the web. We're not going to put any engineers or architects or construction managers out of business. We're going to enable them to communicate better and not be locked into a single thing. The single thing may be great for the specialty task, but then push that. Okay, let's see what's left. We have another question, yeah. Sweet. Is there a generic way that Hierarchy is handled. I mean, you mentioned the video example, but, but for instance, in this oil rig, uh, how is how is this kind of wrapped, <laughs> you know, layered? Um, uh, like any other XML, we can make it to a uh, tree. It is a directed acyclic graph, which means it's a tree you can express. You can also reuse things. So the how you do it gets very interesting because that'll depend on the modeler, or the tool, or how do you do it. Uh, I asked the uh, question yesterday when I was at Mabari, uh, gee, Mike, how are we going to, you know, are we going to, we started talking about open layers. I said, how are we going to put X3D in, in uh, open layers? So different map, everything, open street map, others. He said, oh, oh, drag me up. Here's my poster out in the hall. I think x 3 them does that already. Here's how we work it into our whole server workflow where we collect, fill in the blank, in his case, oceanographic data, robots, and spit out all our visualizations for any scientist to query, go around and jump. And he was just putting it in the web page, tabs, clips, overlays. And 
ironically, the question almost goes away. Because it's just like, oh, yeah, yeah, this is how we do stuff on the web. Now we're doing 3D stuff, too. So uh, that's our solution. Yeah, please, Dave, go ahead. So uh, for the sake of the audio, uh, uh, explanation was it depends and it varies and you structure it in the way that suits the solution to the problem you're trying to solve. Is that a good enough distillation? Yeah. Thank you. It's not a single strict hierarchy. You can tag things and basically deal with multiple ways of collecting instances that have. It's, uh, it's as strict as HTML. Meaning some, certain things go together certain ways, but then as an author or as a tool builder or a workflow department, you have all sorts of flexibility in how you assemble that vocabulary into the chunks, the nouns, the verbs, the actions. And, and hey, it's a hackathon. I am ha I'm here all day happy to drill down on any of these things with you, sort of examples. Okay. And uh, oh, by the way, uh, uh, we aren't done yet, or else this would all be part of your tool suite anyway. I'm just telling you, here's what we're working on, here's what we're doing, it's a bunch of people, we hope to adapt it. So, uh, had, had a, a few discussions for a while, I'm, I'm trying out a new slide on y'all. Uh, now, or, ordinarily, uh, I would only use math to, to as, as, as an emergency escape hat for a really unruly audience. And, and you guys are, <laughs> Because it, it, it calms people right down. You know. uh, got, but uh, for graphics, uh, math is allowed. And well, so you're, I, you're giving us a familiar equation. Yeah. Like something art way out there. That's right. And, and intentionally simple because I, 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 I think I suffered through that in high school somewhere. What's gravity? Isaac, so this is Newton's equation of gravity. But what's, what's not so well known is. Uh, Gee, all of these smart mathematicians, computers, thousands of satellites moving around there. How many of those can we predict exactly? The answer is the math only goes as far as three. When you drill down uh, Wikipedia or elsewhere, you see that this type of problem occurs in many places in physics. There's lots of analogs. So I, I'm kind of wondering. Now, I, I love programming as much as anyone. I do, I do lots of programming. And I, I even love spinning sneakers as much as anybody, uh, which you see a lot of in our industry. But I, I would have to ask you, if everybody is writing OpenGL and writing programs, uh, how many of those can you mash up, comma, together? Can we construct those into one big massive scene like some of the things we're showing? I'll, I'll let you know. When, Somebody gets above three. I mean, the, the, the path there is, is, well, we'll all agree to use the same JavaScript library or something like that, and we'll all agree to certain coding standards and conventions. And uh, how, how many people here know programmers? Uh, if you start talking to them about, thou shalt do it just like the other people, is that, is that, a, is that a popular discussion? OK. so. I think you see we're, we've designed for mashing up and putting together, and, and God bless them, keep writing those programs. I want them to have the export button so they can leave it behind. Here's the one I don't have a slide on, uh, common conversation at SIGGRAPH. Oh, how you been? How's it going? What project are you working on? Then you quickly get to, uh, cool, cool, you look at it, say cool. 
Well, yeah, weren't you working on this other project uh, a couple, three years ago? Well, yeah, but I switched companies and the conversation snowballs. Uh, uh, well, yeah, and they, I can't afford the tool we use then. And oh, and uh, they didn't let me keep it anyway. It's the company owns it. And so many people in 3D have been bumping their head against this low ceiling for so long, they think, well, that's the way of the world. I, I, I guess uh, that's why I got the pirate hat here, I guess. Uh, <laughs> I don't think it has to be. I think if you publish to the web, then you can still show people, you can still show your mom three years later more than a picture of what you did. And maybe reuse, maybe improve on what you did. Okay. So here's my uh, go away slide, please, homework. Here all day. We don't have all the answers, but we've got a lot of them, and a lot of pieces, parts, and we made pretty darn good progress. I don't want to make it sound simple. It took us a few years to where we feel like we're unlocking CAD. Now we're working on more and more tool exports, etc. But it is possible, and I look forward to learning more. So you, you guys have been great. We have a question or as many questions as you like. Sure, if we go to the resources page, uh, let's go back there. Um, and we look at, say, uh, what players are there, or what authoring tool, oh, I'm sorry, more players are there, or what authoring tools are there. More authoring tools and what uh, support for authors. And down here somewhere is converters. Uh, you pretty quickly see that, oh, this is not a single point open source effort. There's lots of open source, there's lots of commercial source. Hooray! Just like HTML, just like other things. We, we want industry to succeed. We want to be part of their business model, part of their success. So it's not a open source or else. It's open source, make sure that it is repeatable. And there's some other really great graphics programmer or workflow expert or ABC or BIM team can put together end to end solutions and not be locked in. Other questions? Yeah, Dave, go ahead.
Uh, Fraunhofer uh, BS Contact is uh, it's in beta testing still. Hopefully soon, uh, called BS Contact, a uh, uh, 3D authoring environment that's native X3D for that. Yeah, and that's that's sort of what I think we built a little bit of like master model and you know, general themes and how to put it in different reactions and everything. And that's sort of the best we've got. And I'm curious about the other one. I, I see the platform running on uh, on Dragon. And uh, uh, thank you, David. I agree with your uh, overview, your summary there. And, and to get quantitative about uh, how do we do that, right, right once test everywhere, it is hard. We're building tools. Here's our uh, Hello World thing, which uh, there's something like 290 languages with Hello World programs on Wikipedia. Here's ours. It actually has a little one meter world in it. But uh, what's cool about this is here's our validator. I just use the online server. It's using uh, different forms of XML checking, uh, all sorts of checks. I think we have a total of nine checks, including Schematron, which looks at every little nit nitpick. So guess what? Every time somebody finds, hey, this scene doesn't work, I'm always checking to make sure are our tests finding that error. Okay. So this is the state of play. This is the level of maturity in our consortium. There's tool makers using it, authors being able to check, hey, it's not my fault, it's the tool's fault. Oh, and the other tool works. That's a very uh, repetitive and necessary process. And the more you do, the less you have to redo when it's formalized. Nobody can do that on their own. Other questions? Great question. How do we is the interaction and user interaction and I and I presume animation uh, built in or layered on top? Okay. Uh, welcome to the frontier. For X3D proper, it's all internal. We can do it. It works. For X3D mashed up as a layer in HTML, well, we can embed, but we're pulling it out. In fact. Uh, uh, that was one of our discussion topics this week. They have a bunch of examples already. How do we use the HTML, and specifically the DOM, document object event model, to make it so, yeah, it's just like web authors already know how to do in JavaScript. So we are reconciling the two event models. Can it be done? Yes. We have lots of examples. What's the best way to do it? Can we regularize it? We're now at the cutting edge of what today's activity is all about. Our timeline is, uh, I would guess, uh, we will probably narrow it down to two or three approaches, maybe by next spring. It's not a new subject. We, we, we were participating in the DOM events groups 10 years ago. Using the oil rig example, yeah. there's that little slider you didn't answer. Right. Can you see that, by the yeah, way? Yeah, yeah, sure.
there were uh, a lot of excellent uh, jQuery demos with X3DOM and HTML and CSS in the, uh, uh, let me get a good viewpoint where we can see, in the most recent uh, conference. So people are experimenting with cool ways to do it and maybe best ways. So the sun position is a nice little slider. Uh, I am, knowing how the Fraunhofer guys work, I am sure that this is a separate widget up at the HTML level, and they are routing in events from HTML into the scene, and because the X3D is embedded as, uh, with divs as a layer in the HTML, you can do that straightforward, and it's a matter of implementation. So we don't want to have to tell people, do it this way. We will, just want to say, you can use it the old X3D way, or you can use it the new, how you're used to doing it in HTML. That's the sun position that, that lives in the... My machine is talking to me, get some power. Uh, final point, and, and then I'm going to get my plug and you get the talk, is when I slide this, all we're doing is changing a lighting vector, but all of that's being recomputed on the fly in the scene. This is what 3D does. This that is interactive like 3D that. graphics. Is so that there's it? some sort of hook in the scene that can hook into the scene and change a variable that's through HTML. That is correct. Correct, and in uh, X3D uh, itself, we can also embed JavaScript within an X3D scene. So if you don't have an HTML page, you can still use your JavaScript skills and capabilities. Okay, that completes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all for your time.